Today, I have an interesting case that I would like to present and discuss with all of you. This is a 72-year-old male with a history of COPD, hypertension, and chronic atrial fibrillation who presented to the emergency department with shortness of breath. Initially, his vitals had a blood pressure of 145 over 80. He had a pulse of 96, respiratory rate of 28, so he was breathing pretty quickly, and his saturations were 82% on room air. He also had a fever with a temperature of 101.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Examination, uh, his heart had a, a regularly uh, irregular rhythm. Uh, as far as his lungs, he had bilateral uh, air entry, but it was diminished. Abdomen was soft and non-tender, and he had uh, pulses in all extremities. He was quickly placed on BiPAP with settings of a 12 over 5, with FiO2 of 100%. Uh, his saturations increased 100%, but his respiratory rate also went up to 32 per minute. So he was becoming more and more uncomfortable. Well, did a quick chest x-ray, a uh, portable chest x-ray, which showed um, a right lower lobe pneumonia with uh, hyper uh, expanded lung fields. Relevant labs, he had an elevated white count of 18,000. His hemoglobin was okay at 13.2. His ABG on the BiPAP showed a pH of 7.18 a PCO2 of 90, and a PO2 of 170. So treatment, what did we do for, the, for this gentleman? So on day zero, he was admitted to the pulmonary floor. Uh, he had pulmonary consultation called. Diagnosis was a right lower lobe pneumonia with COPD exacerbation. He was started on uh, antibiotics. He was started on Leviquin, 500 milligrams IVQ daily, Salumedrol, 40 milligrams IVQ eight hours. He was also given Duonebs every six hours, and we continued him on his home eloquence for his AFib, five milligrams POBID, and low pressure, 50 milligrams POBID for his blood pressure and also for his heart rate. He also sent blood and sputum cultures to see if there's a, uh, a bug growing. As the blood gas in the patient's condition was poor, we decided to transition him to a high velocity vapotherm precision flow. We started him at 30 liters per minute with FiO2 of 100%. Uh, we repeated the ABG in approximately two hours. Um, within 10 minutes, his respiratory rate dropped to 20 after being placed on the high velocity, and he was definitely more comfortable. Now we repeated the ABG two hours later, and the ABG was consistent with his clinical presentation as he's improving. So now his pH went up to 7.30. His CO2 dropped down to 75 and his PO2 was 280. So we decreased his FiO2 to 50%. Kept him at the same uh, velocity of 30 liters per minute. Blood cultures came back negative. His sputum cultures grew out strep pneumonia. So at day two, um, the patient clinically seems to be improved. He was less tachypnic. His blood pressure uh, was okay. It was 132 over 76. He's no longer tachycardic. His pulse was 76 beats per minute. Respiratory rate is now down to 20, and he's saturating 100%. Repeated ABG on day two. Now the pH improved uh, to normal, 7.37. His CO2 is down to 66. PO2 is 150. And his FiO2 was further decreased by 30%. Um, and the flow decreased to 20 liters per minute. Pretty much have it on autopilot here, where the respiratory therapist managed that. But this is just something that, um, you know, I just wanted to, you know, follow up and I asked them to have an ABG to see that what those results are. So improved ABG. So as the patient continued to improve, uh, respiratory therapists took it upon themselves to put the patient now on a nasal cannula at two liters per minute. And day four, the patient was discharged um, with uh, another day or two of antibiotics, medro dose pack. Um, and of course, he got his refill for his lima and lava, nebulizer medications, and follow up with his pulmonologist in a week. So concluding statement here. So years ago, this patient uh, would have been intubated in the ED. I mean, no question about it. He was tachypnic, he was hypoxic, um, and, and he didn't tolerate BiPAP. So that would have been a normal procedure. Fail BiPAP, let me put you on a ventilator. And you know what that transitions, transitions to, admission to the intensive care unit, and who knows how long the patient's gonna be on a, a ventilator, probably at least a couple days. Um, but in this case, we had the high velocity vapotherm precision flow that was able to provide that sufficient pressure and comfort to the patient. The patient became comfortable and it was pretty dramatic. It happened within 20 minutes. 
Um, and, and we saw that with the drop in the respiratory rate and we also saw the improvement in blood gas. And you know, initially the blood gas did improve nicely in two hours and then by the next day it was, it was a near perfect blood gas. The use of the high velocity treatment allowed the patient to receive the necessary supportive care while receiving the treatment for his pneumonia and also his COPD exacerbation. Um, so, you know, again, I think something to keep that in mind that, you know, here we were able to divert the patient from being admitted to the ICU, divert the patient from being put on a ventilator, which could then increase the length of stay to who knows. I mean, he was only in the hospital here for four days. He could have easily doubled maybe even 10 days. Um, so I think that that's a, that's a win for both the patient um, and also just in general, just utilizing resources. You didn't have to use an intensive care unit bed. The patient was managed on the pulmonary floor um, and, and, and treated well and, and discharged within only four days. So pretty dramatic um, and, and excellent improvement for the patient, but that's because of the tools that we had. Thank you. Mm -hmm.